Bubble is a platform that allows you to create websites and apps with no code but it has all the data stored in house. So you can make these really cool automations, which makes it a little bit different than other platforms. So in this video, we're gonna make the front end of our app or website, talk a little bit about the back end, which they refer to as workflows. And then finally go over some competitors like Webflow and Framer that might also be better for you when making your project. When you first log on to Bubble here, you're gonna be in this app section. So you can go ahead and create an app. I already have one made, you can go to build and then create an app as well here. But I already have one built, so let's just open that guy up. Now I'm trying to copy, you can press no thanks on this. I'm trying to copy my website, what I typically do in most tutorials. So what you end up doing, you come in here, it looks very familiar, you got stuff on the left, you got stuff on the right. What you're up going to do is go to this component section. I find this to be the easiest way to get started. Is come up here and drag that up at the top and then drag this guy over here just to get you started, right? Now, you can close out of components by clicking that. We have some foundation stuff now. I wanna build this so it's very similar in a sense, but I like to have this built out before I start adding stuff. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag this video over here until I see this line. So I'm gonna drag and drop that, this thing pops up. We can add the video ID. So if I wanna to go to YouTube and I go to my channel and I find the video that I usually use, which is this guy, and I grab this ID right here. Now make sure you grab all of this without the and T stuff. And let's throw that in the video ID. Okay, that should work. So that is working. Close out of that. I don't want this image here. I purposely put it to the right because I knew when I delete the image, this will stay. This right here is, let's just double click that. Try to see, this is the here header, right? This is our group container, I believe. Okay, so that's our group container. If we click this plus, you can see we have this section and then the video, right? Within this section, we have this text to header and this group. So I'm gonna drag this and move it in here because I think there's too much space there and I like this better. So what you need to do, we're gonna grab, hey, copy that, paste it over here, bam, make the styling heading one. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit better. The second piece, we can grab this guy, bam, make, add that in here, control V. Okay, starting to look good. Now we're missing one, so I'm just gonna grab some text, drag it underneath here, add that. Um, let's go ahead and grab my little text over here, control V. I'm gonna change the style to maybe like a heading six. Eh. It's looking kind of janky, so I'm like, oh, do I even want this? And I don't know why it's like looking kind of funky. Ooh, definitely not. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that. This is fine for now. Cool, I don't need some extra text, but you can see it's kind of hard to like style this. If you want to change like layout and all this, there are so many options here. This is how you do the styling and appearance. So your appearance is more like you know, what's your font, what's the color, line spacing, stuff like that. You just kind of have to play around with it. Layout is kind of more, you've got some margins, padding down here, very typical kind of web design stuff. Um, but for this for this purposes, it's, this looks fine. This looks very close to my website. So if we look at this preview button, you can see what it looks like when it loads. So you can see I'm super zoomed out, but you know, it's, it looks decent. You can probably play around with this so it doesn't look so janky with that kind of stuff, but you know, it gets the job done. It looks similar-ish. Um, so you can edit this and change with the width and height to kind of play around with the ratio and stuff, but for now it's decent. So we have the front end done. You really just have to play with these elements this elements tree and make sure you're moving things in the right container. I will say the thing that throws people off and that threw me off is when you click, like you're in a kind of like a container here, right? You double click this, layout is row. So anything in that container, this will be in a row to the video. So if you look at this group text button, that's this section, it's gonna be in a row with the video, okay? 
And then if you get in to this section, this is gonna be a column, right? Because it's stacked. So anything in this group text plus button right here, text header, blah, blah, that layout is in a column. So it's literally going, it won't let you put it in a row, right? I mean, you could change it to row if you wanted, but this is a column, right? It's one, two, three, bam, column. So that's what threw me off. I was like, how do I get this thing to line up? So just keep that in mind that the layout, it, whether it's a row or column or fixed, is really gonna throw off your styling and the front end section. Now that we have the front end piece, I wanna talk about the advantages of this site because it has these things called workflows. So when you look at this button, you can right click and, or double click and start or edit a workflow. So you can go, you can either do it this way or you can go to workflow and say when icon menu is clicked or image logo. So let's just go back because this is how I would do it. Double click on this, start and edit workflow. When button sign up is clicked, do whatever. This is like having Zapier built into your app because you can basically add, create a new thing, data things, you can send an email, you can sign the user up, you can have a navigation, you can like open an external website and then just send them to my website. Throw that in there. Go ahead and press enter. Except that, and you can keep adding steps. You could say, okay, send them to my website, log them in, you know, whatever you want. And then you can even add plugins. So you can add like Stripe and send them to a payment service. It's very cool. And that's what this service has that I feel like some of the other low code um, applications to make websites don't have. So when we go back to our design and we see preview, we can, we can press the sign up button and then bam, it takes me to that website. It's so cool. Like that may not be as cool as some of the other ones, but the fact that you can have this send a workflow and say, when you click this, do this, set, send payment, you know, uh, navigate, sign them in, check a password. I mean, that is so unique. Like I haven't seen anything like that in Webflow and some of the other applications without having like a third party like Zapier or something built in or integrated into your website. Now, if you want to learn more about Bubble, some of the other cool things, this is what I found online when I asked Twitter, you know, what, what are some people out there that are teaching Bubble, right? Cause I was kind of struggling a lot with the front end, like it's just different. So if we go in here, I found this place called BuildCamp. So you can see right here, um, he's got some free videos here, his name's Gregory but he also has a community. So I signed up, you know, logged in. And a lot of the, these how-tos are free, um, but you can take this course, like there's a Bubble Beginners Bootcamp. That is the one that I would take. Like personally, when I w was looking at it, I was like $348. I mean, that's actually not terrible, but I'm like, am I gonna invest that when I'm not sure about, but I wanna play around with Bubble more before I jump on like getting all of, you know, the courses and stuff. But that's actually not a bad deal for totally having somebody t walk you through some of the steps, you know? And then um, he also has a, a circle thing. So I logged in here. This is just on circle. It's like a community. So you can ask questions and chat with him and stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. And this one's free. Um, he's got the YouTube um, channel and all that. So I just feel like this is a good place to start if you want to play around with Bubble. Okay, so let's talk competitors because there are a couple competitors here. So I'm mainly gonna talk about Webflow and Framer. So if we look at Webflow here, we have the same sort of thing, all the stuff's on the left. It's a little bit easier to navigate, I will say, just to, the front end is a little bit better to kind of play around with and drag and drop things as well. But the thing that I feel like it doesn't have is, and, and it has data stuff, right? But it's not, it doesn't seem like it has those workflows that we were looking at. Framer is also the same deal. I think this is beautiful as far as the, in, the interactive kind of space, because when you drag and drop things, it really is like a drag and drop. You can place it wherever you want and it looks like pretty dang good. But again, the thing, they all have this data component, these collections and stuff, but you would really, it's not as simple as those workflows that we were seeing with Bubble. Okay, so what are my recommendations? I would say use Bubble if you want to have that kind of backend functionality where you can add things and have these really cool complex automations and workflows. I would use Webflow if you've coded before and you're, you like the interface a little bit more and you're not worried about the automations. And I would use Framer if you're a complete beginner and you are starting from scratch. It's very beginner friendly compared to the other two. 
Now I did do tutorials with this exact same layout that I showed you in this tutorial for Framer and for Webflow. So I will link those below and up here. So check those out if you wanna see if those tools are, maybe might be better for your project. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.